Welcome back to DR Sports, everyone. It's been a while since we've covered tennis on the channel, and we're back at it. Of course, across 2023, we will be keeping a close eye on the tennis after we brought you the Wimbledon coverage. We hope you all enjoyed that. I had an absolute blast in with AGT. Lee Pipple was fantastic as well, and we look forward to covering a little bit more of that here on DR Sports. But let's get into it because we've now pretty much seen round one. I say that because of the time of recording. Casper uh, Rude is going into a fourth set. I think he's about to win that, though. Um, and we've just seen Andy Murray as well beat Berrettini. What a shot. I mean, is it a shock? Because we know what Andy Murray's achieved in the game. We know what a legend of tennis he is. But obviously, you know, he had his injury problems. He nearly retired. Um, in fact, it was actually the Australian Open that a lot of tributes were coming in about three, four years ago. You know, saying, you know, thanks for everything you've done in the game. Um, and, you know, now he's back on court and he's beating, well, the world number 13, Berrettini. Um, but he's beating him in five sets. He's going the distance. You know, fitness isn't an issue. He's showing some sublime tennis in the first two sets to go two sets to love up um, and okay Berrettini had a massive opportunity to win and we'll go into it in a little detail in a second but it's just an amazing story that's why I think yes okay underdog I mean I, I mean he probably was um, and we know that you know in the run up to Wimbledon as well he was showing some tremendous form had some big wins in the tournaments going into Wimbledon in 2022 but especially from the position you know with Berrettini pulling it back to uh, two sets all, Murray's done incredibly well to come through. So let's go through some of the details on it, which I've got here on screen. Uh, Murray won the first set 6-3, the second set 6-3. Berrettini then took the third 6-4, a tie break, when in fact two tie breaks ended up ending the final two sets. 7-6 and a 9-7 tie break win for Berrettini. And then Murray 10-6 after storming to a five love lead, I think, in that final set. He was in total control, well, was in total control, made to work a little bit towards the end of that set, that deciding set, but he did get the win. Berrettini served 31 aces to Murray's 17, only the two double faults for Murray though, serving very well, both winning 70% 70 of their points on their first serve. Let's get a little break, I mean more, more winners hit for Berrettini, uh, let's have a little look at unforced errors, more for Berrettini as well, I mean a massive Unforced error we'll chat about in a second. Uh, break points one, Murray won three of the five he had, but Berrettini had five as well, only converted one of them. And I, you know, I keep alluding now to that massive point he missed at two sets all, 30-40 in the fifth. And Berrettini with a back end, you know, Murray's come to the net, and Berrettini just needs to hit it cross court, just get it over because you're probably not going long. Get it over, and he's hit it into the net. I mean. It's like he just froze in that moment there, Berrettini. What a massive, massive point he missed there at match point. It was there on a plate. It's the equivalent in football of just skying it over the, um, skying it over the over the bar, you know, from two yards out. I mean, it. And look, tennis is a cruel sport. I saw people tweeting about it. It's a, it's such a cruel sport because you're not there till you're there. You can miss a chance in football, but if you're one nil up, you might still be able to defend well and see it out. You have to win your points in tennis. You have to get over the line. And Murray would have seen, you know, Murray would have been on the other end of cruelty in another sense, having gone two love up, lost a tie break in the fourth. And, and he would have been thinking, oh my word, all this work, you know, and, and bear it for Berrettini to turn it around. But Murray came through and what an amazing, amazing first round match in the Australian Open. Lots of twists. But Murray as well. You know, and, and by the way, I, I caught the end of the game and I'm, I'm, I missed some of the first, but Murray, you know, you, you go through the highlights, you look at what he did. I mean, some of those shots, some vintage backhands, you know, running across, you know, when you're running across court charging, he just pulls out that backhand across court. Unreal from Murray. And, you know, I mean, I'm really hoping he can go far. I'm really hoping he can go far um, because, you know, his Wimbledon was cut short in that second round defeat. Um, and I'd love to see Andy Murray, along with Djokovic and Nadal, of course, have been, they have been having that, those uh, Grand Slam sort of tournament runs that you'd expect. Okay, maybe not so much the end of last year, although Djokovic did win Wimbledon. Um, but I just think it'd be great to see Murray up there again. Um, that's pretty much it on Murray beating Berrettini. Looking at Kyrgios out with an injury, it's a real shame. You know, quarter finest at the US Open, finest at Wimbledon. And, you know, it feels like he's focused. You know, I've watched the first episode of Breakpoint, that series on Netflix, the drive to survive of tennis. Um, and it was kind of very interesting getting to know him a little bit more. And, you know, he's so talented. You root for him to go far and play in the big games. Lost to Kachanov in the in five sets in the US Open um, 
in the US Open quarterfinals. And it's a shame that we're not going to be able to see how well he can do at the Australian Open, his home tournament, um, especially after having such an impressive Wimbledon and going far in the US. So it's a shame we won't see more of Nick Kyrgios. But, 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 we do have Medvedev, Tsitsipas, Nori, Sinner, Djokovic and Rune all through in three sets. Of course, Sinner and Rune, two very young, exciting players. Djokovic, I mean, Djokovic, we know what he's all about. He came through comfortably, especially in that final set. In that final set. Uh, Medvedev, Tsitsipas, again, through pretty comfortably. Nori as well, after that brilliant Wimbledon he had. Cool doing his thing. Um, and Rune, the youngster that was talked about a lot towards the end of last year, um, going through as well. Zverev threw in five sets, came from one down and two one down, so showed some character to come through. Fritz and Auger Aliassime as well, booking their place in four sets. And the other big game of the first round that I was definitely keeping an eye on was Nadal versus Jack Draper, the young Brit that everyone's been really excited about, both left-handers. Um, Draper served 13 aces. They both had, well, it was 12 break points Nadal to Draper's 11. So they both had a lot of break points and Draper of course did claim that second set played very well but Nadal came through fairly comfortably in that final set in the end um, so Nadal comes through a tricky first match and you know people were looking ahead of his potential run through to the final and it does look trickier than Djokovic's but again lots of quality players on Djokovic's side as well so this could shape up to be a really fascinating Australian Open on the uh, women's side of the draw Sviotek Goff, Raducanu, Garcia all comfortably through Jabor worked quite hard but did come through in the final set fairly comfortably as well. And we are looking at Goff versus Raducanu in the second round. Now, while I don't follow, you know, Raducanu quite as closely as I follow, for example, you know, Andy Murray, you know, when she won the US Open, which was, I believe, September 2021, you know, of course, that came with all the expectations, all the next best, best big thing, what happens now. And of course, she hasn't quite been able to match that, but she's incredibly young. She's only 20 years old still. And what we saw at that US Open was her immense potential. And it's about nurturing that. And, you know, sports, sports players, you know, across many sports, you see it in football now. I keep referencing sport, of course. If you follow what I, you know my content, you'll know that that's my the sport I watch the most. And um, you know, footballers are going to 33, 34, 35, and still playing at the highest level. Look at the Luka Modric's of this world. So, at 20 years old, with sports science these days, what with what Djokovic and Nadal are doing, what Federer did for so long, and I know that they are, you know, real freaks. I can I mean, look at Serena Williams, what she's done, even Venus playing for so long. Um, you know. Raducanu does not need to worry, and I don't think anyone needs to worry about her because the potential is immense. Uh, but she's got Coco Goff in the next round, who herself is 18. I remember she broke through at Wimbledon, and I just think that is a, a mouth-watering tie because these are two of the most exciting prospects in um, in women's tennis and in tennis generally. And I, I can't wait to see what Goff and Raducanu are going to serve up for us, if you pardon the pun, um, in the next round of the Australian Open. But yes, all eyes on Sviotek, of course, who beat Jabour. Those two will be the ones that I'm following really, really closely. They both met in the US Open final and they had very, very strong 2022. So let's see what they bring in 2023. All right, going to leave it there. That's just a little catch up on round one of the Australian Open. Hope you've all enjoyed it. And of course, we will do stuff through the week as the big games, the big players come head to head and all the big talking points. We'll make sure to cover most of them here on DR Sports and DR Tennis. Hope you've enjoyed it let, 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 uh, I did so well I nearly nearly just flowed straight into the outro there but let me know your thoughts in the comment section below um what you'd like us to talk about what you've noticed from round one of the Australian Open and what you'd like to see from DR Sports when covering tennis this year all right many thanks everyone smash the like button if you enjoyed it subscribe for DR Sports for everything football tennis boxing YouTube boxing everything we've got it covered catch you soon <laughs>